about two minutes. Not in a hurry. See what time it is, okay? Okay, so we're gonna try using one of these combustion leak testers on the cooling system. I've never used one before, uh, so I figured it was worth a try. I picked this one up at AutoZone. This is the fluid, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, I've never used one. Hopefully, uh, we've done a compression test. We have one cylinder that was lower than the others. That's our suspect one, but not necessarily enough to say there's a head gasket blown or any other issue. But our cooling system continues to give us problems. And what we got, we played around. We're positive we can get all the air out of the system. It doesn't overheat until we get it on. It's kind of like a chain reaction this last test drive we did. Well, it runs, runs good, 180 degrees, 190 at the highest, even climbing a hill, um, does really good. Then we do a zero to 60 wide open throttle. Um, after that, temperature still maybe 200 degrees, 198, 200, so nothing abnormal. We drive it home, it's got probably five minutes of cool down time, going downhill temperatures look good and then as we are coming to a stop we notice the temperatures start to climb uh 100 210 212 213 if i give it a little uh rev up the rpms to a thousand at idle it seems to cool down but it's just at 210 where we look outside and the coolant reservoir tank is empty so it's basically sprayed out all the coolant out of the reservoir tank. Like you can see here, this is after yesterday's test drive. Um, we've got coolant down there. And we know we've cleaned up everything. It's coming out of this coolant cap. So we replaced the cap thinking that might be it, but it's not. It looks like it's just bleeding through the pressure relief on the cap. So tells us what we're thinking is we got pressurizing, something's pressurizing our system. And first thing that comes to my mind, you got you got a head gasket issue, cylinder head issue, or worst case, a block issue. So we're gonna try this test and see if it can confirm we're getting any hydrocarbons. There's some that do gas and diesel. This one is gas only. I think it says right there, not, get it in English, right there not for use in diesel engines. So, um, yeah, we'll go from there. We're gonna go ahead and just add some coolant so we're not running the system dry. We'll start it, we're supposed to let it warm up, get operating temperature. We're actually probably gonna do a test at operating temperature and then do a test after we do a hard acceleration to build that combustion pressure, so. All right, so hopefully this isn't too shaky. But we just wanted to try something first, to just do some low drive, low speed driving around the property. And you can see the temperature is staying right around. It hasn't gotten above 180 yet. Uh, interesting thing is that oil temperature stays within a degree of that. Uh, oh, there we go, we got 181. So that's the warmest it's gotten so far since we've been driving around. So I think we'll try to do a quick test. Uh, came back down. Because I don't think the thermostat opens up till 191, 195. So might do one of the a test now, or we might get on the highway and just get the temperature up. So make sure it's circulating. Okay, so you see we're at 181, 182 is the highest we saw it. Just did a little stall test with the torque converter to see. Uh, but here's our coolant level. It's down below the cold line. So there's no reason why we should be spraying out. So I don't know if it's worth it. Let's see. It feels like the thermostat opened, the hose is hot. So we could probably do a little quick test before we just get on the highway and build some pressure and see what happens. So we're doing 60 miles an hour, just light acceleration. It didn't get above 3,500 RPMs and it, it's never got above 187. Now we're at 177. We're climbing a, a slight hill now. So we just shifted down into third gear. So we should get some temperature, but it won't overheat. Well, we just got, we climbed a small hill, didn't get up to more than 188. And then we just uh, traveled down the hill. We're gonna pull off here, check the coolant level before we climb the steep part of the hill. 
you can see it dropped it down to 175 once oil temperatures 178 so we're gonna jump out just check the reservoir tank for color or for fluid level and then we'll climb the hill which will be a lot harder on the engine so we'll see if we notice a difference so you can see here coolant levels right at the low mark which is where we topped it off before this whole test procedure before we even started the motor uh, pull the cap I don't feel any pressure you can see a little bit of steam coming out of it it's hard to see bubbles on this one we're not getting anything out of this top radiator bleeder so it'd be hard to see bubbles in this type of reservoir tank so we're going to go ahead and do the hill climb just now starting the incline to 45 miles and it's miles an hour it's going to switch to 55 here and we'll accelerate and hold the gear but we're up to 193 now run about 2500 rpms that's 3500 rpms so that's 60 right there about 3,900 RPMs and probably gonna stick right around here this entire climb. But we're running a 193, 194 for coolant temp. And this is a pretty good climb. I mean, it works all our cars. This is where I do usually do the cooling system test because it has to hold the gear and it's a pretty steep climb. We're up to 197. Thermostat should be open completely. Oops. We're at 4,000 RPMs. top of this hill and check the reservoir tank. We're at 202. We're almost at the top of the hill. And there we are. So now we're slowing down, pulling off. And the coolant temperature is dropping already. So the cooling system is behaving properly. 198. We'll pull over here. And we'll just check the reservoir tank. Let's see if she sprayed out. Right, so you can see we completely filled up the reservoir tank when it got up to 203. What's it at? 204. So the temperature's rising now. Let's see if there's any pressure in the system, huh? If you look in now, still don't really see bubbles per se. getting bubbles back there from that upper radiator bypass hose. You kind of see the behavior that we're seeing there. What we'll do now is we'll get back on the road and I'll do a zero to 60 wide open throttle acceleration and get the RPMs will be up there closer to five and that's usually when she purges. 60 hard acceleration. Once I get out onto the lane, floor it. We're 6,000 RPM.
power slowing down and we'll see if she peeks out the coolant. We'll go back to the house and run a combustion test. Still temperatures didn't get hot. We're at 195. We're, we're, we're basically idling downhill so there's no load on the engine. Temperature's dropping back down. Watch it not do it today. We'll still run the test and if we gotta rev it up I, here at the house. Oh, just stopping and see because that's what we did over there. We just stopped. Yeah, I figure we'll pull up in front of the garage. Okay, block some of the wind noise. We're gonna keep it running and we're gonna do the set up the contester. See, our temperature's climbing now. I'd be surprised if we hadn't uh, sprayed out coolant already. Let's stop it. Yeah. Going down, so it's like it's working now. We pull the kit. All right, <laughs> it broke. So what we'll do is we'll get this set up. Just gotta keep the lid on now until we're ready. Pull up to that fluid line, I guess. Lid on it. Put this plunger on. Okay, so it says just to cycle this about two minutes. Not in a hurry. You see what time it is, Ken? Okay, so it basically told us to slowly squeeze this tube for about two minutes. And that's what we've been, it's about two minutes. This is my last one. So I'll do one more. But it kind of looks like it turned more of a green color, yellow green. And something to note is our temperature, the food level starting to rise in here. You don't want it to touch, get it, get sucked up under this, it'll ruin the test. But our temperature is raising too, it's up to 212, just sitting here idling. So we're pretty much done with the test. We pull this out and if it turns it says if it's a green or yellow or if it's if it stayed the same color as this then it was okay then there's no leak but it looks like we got a leak because that's like a yellowish green we'll double check the package to see if it shows anything but i'd say we got a, a leak That test uh, confirmed we do have a combustion leak somewhere. As I mentioned in the before, could be head gasket, could be a warped head, could be cracking the cylinder head, or worst case, the block. Now, I've done a quick search on rebuild kits for this motor. Unfortunately, I can only find one. It's made by DNG, and it's been on back order for months now. So I'm going to do some more research, see if I can find, I reached out to a company that does remanufactured Land Rover engines, but they will not return my calls or my emails. So don't know if they're even in business anymore. So at this point, I'm going to try to see if I can piece together a rebuild kit myself, get a cost estimate, uh, come up with a plan. So we got two cars that, uh, the LR3 and the white 2007 Touareg that, uh, have some major issues. So let's uh, see what we're going to do. If you got any suggestions, ideas, uh, recommendations, let us know. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for what we decide to do with this 